Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. It's late in the evening and I've come down here to film this episode before it gets so loud I can't even talk to you. Because this pond behind me is going to be full of spring peepers making a giant racket. I'm in New York State in the Hudson Valley in the middle of a little town on the Hudson River. This is a little spring-fed drainage pond in the middle of a suburban neighborhood. And it is a rich place for wildlife. In this episode, I'm going to give you six fascinating facts about spring peepers, including the breakdown of their scientific name and their common name, the fact that they can freeze almost solid and come back to life, and some other really, really interesting facts about their biology, and how they make this 90 decibel sound when they're no bigger than your thumbnail. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. Fascinating fact number one, the scientific name of the spring peeper is Pseudochris crucifer. The roots, pseudo, means false, acris means locust, which was a common term to describe cicadas that you can hear so loud in the woods. So this was described as a false cicada because of their call. The species name, crucifer, comes from the Latin meaning cross-bearer. And in fact, the spring peeper bears a cross. And if you look on his back, you can see that cross as an X across his dorsal side. The common name spring peeper refers to the fact that it's one of the first frogs that come out in the spring, and it sounds like a baby chick. And so it makes a peeping sound. Biologists describe this peeping sound collectively like a high-pitched sleigh bells. Fascinating fact number two. Spring peepers are one of the first frogs to breed in the springtime. In my area, we usually have wood frogs breeding first, followed by the spring peeper. What those two frogs have in common is they can survive freezing. Spring peepers can withstand exposure to temperatures as low as 18 degrees Fahrenheit or minus eight Celsius and 70% of their body can freeze and their heart will actually stop. Somehow when they thaw out, they'll warm up and their heart will start beating again. As the temperature drops below 32 degrees, they'll start concentrating glucose in cells to protect them from freezing as a natural antifreeze. This concentration of glucose prevents ice crystals from forming and shattering those cells. With this ability to survive freezing temperatures, these amphibians can start with the breeding process very, very early in the springtime, even when it seems almost still winter. They prefer vernal pools or temporary pools or ponds that don't have fish in them that will eat their eggs. Fact number three, only the males sing. It's only the male spring peepers that make their sound. And the male spring peepers are actually much smaller than the females. And they can make a sound that's up to 90 decibels. So the males are attracting the females. The males with the loudest and the fastest sound are the ones the females are most attracted to. A fascinating thing that also occurs is an adaptation by some male frogs not to call at all. These are called satellite males. These satellite males position themselves near this loud, dominant frog that the females are attracted to, and they attempt to mate with the females before they can find this loud frog that was attracting all of them. Fascinating fact number four. How do these males make this sound that's so deafening, even though they're only as big as your fingertip? The males will take a deep breath, close their nostrils in their mouth and force air from their lungs into a sac below their chin that inflates like a balloon. As this sac releases air, air passes over its vocal cords, making this very, very loud sound. 
it can be heard almost two miles away. So when you have hundreds of frogs, each one making a sound as loud as 90 decibels or as loud as a lawnmower, it can be really, really deafening. Fascinating fact number five. These female frogs can lay upwards of a thousand eggs. So with hundreds of frogs in this pond, each one laying thousands of eggs, there's gonna be so many tadpoles. The tadpoles, of course, will be subject to predation by all sorts of things, which would find them as a tasty morsel. But those that survive will metamorphosize into frogs in four to six weeks, emerge from the pond, and hang out in low-lying vegetation, grasses, weedy areas, and damp places. They're really a lot like tree frogs, and they are great climbers, and they have those sticky pads like a tree frog. However, they prefer to stay close to the ground. Fascinating fact number six. They're impossible to find. I spent two nights here searching for these frogs, and last year I looked for them too, I finally found one, thanks to my daughter's sharp eye, in a forsythia plant that had no leaves on it, and I was sure I could identify the source of the sound. They're so small, they stay so close to the ground, usually they're at the base of vegetation right in the pond itself, and you can get right up close to them and not see them. If you are lucky enough to find one, look for the crucifer, the cross bearer, the X across his back for, a, for sure identification of this species. I thought you might enjoy hearing these spring peepers and I'm sure you're gonna recognize this sound because I bet you've heard them before even if you didn't know what they were. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. I had to get this in before they started singing because it would be too loud otherwise to hear my voice if I was this close to the pond and try to do this explanation. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. You know I try to cover all things nature, from plants, and trees, and wildflowers, and insects, reptiles, and amphibians. I love sharing and teaching about all of these things. And leave me a comment. I love reading comments from my viewers, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching this episode nature at your door.